Hi everybody at Unity of Music City. I've been looking so forward to being with you all today and I just didn't expect that it would be in this way. But we are flexible and if those in the world who have been so able to rise to the circumstances that we are all facing so well, then we can do the same today. We can use our technology and we can gather together in a way that is safe and hopefully uh, uplifting and healing for all of us. I don't know about you, but I am, um, I suspect that many of you like me, after finding yourselves at home, maybe a bit more lately than usual, you found that you have a little more time on your hands. And something that was very apparent to me uh, two weeks ago when I came home to shelter in place was that this time wants to do something with me. This transition that our world is going through, is meeting together and is moving through together, has great purpose. And that it was up to me and that it's up to each one of us to make the space to be available, to make the change welcome, make the healing welcome, make the transition welcome. And uh, I'm sure many of you can relate to the reality that the world outside of us offers us the opportunity to experience many different emotions and thoughts and feelings, many of which are fearful, um, unsettling, uncertain, but we know in, so in times of uncertainty, we can rely on the eternal realm, the realm of the changeless in times of change. And so I'd like to start today by just focusing in on the value of that inner calm that creates clarity and that we can cultivate and offer not only to ourselves, but to a world that is in great need of calm, of calm and centered, serene clarity in this time of change as we navigate from day to day the differences that arise our ability to connect with the, the realm of the changeless is invaluable to us right now. So I just wanted to start today by acknowledging something that I found, or actually that found me through social media um, last week. And I shared it on my Facebook, but I wanted to share it with you all today because I think it uh, is something that's so important for us to consider, and that is in the rush to return to normal. Let's use this time to consider which parts of normal are worth rushing back to. And for me, something that has been very clear is calm is definitely worth returning to every time, calm. Because I have this interesting opportunity of uh, circumstances. Uh, I wasn't able to provide music myself or have anyone here in my home to provide music. And as a side note, I don't play well enough to accompany myself. So that's something else to consider and to think about um, for times of change in the future. But um, I do have a way for a good friend of mine to accompany us on some time um, of going inward, into the silence. Many of you may remember uh, Jack Fowler, who was um, a, a part of our New Thought community here in Nashville for many years, and he has written and recorded many beautiful songs. Uh, this one, one of them. So I just invite you to, in this moment, make yourself comfortable in wherever you are, and Assume a posture that allows you to relax into and be supported by 
the chair or the sofa or whatever you may be sitting or sitting in or laying on and just allow your awareness to come into the space in which you are and let's all take a deep breath together in and out and again bringing full awareness into this space now a breath in and out And I invite Jack Fowler now to take us into the silence. In the silence, there is peace. In the silence, there Unspoken joy In the silence there's release From a world full of chaos and Silence there's peace in the silence there is unspoken joy in the silence there's release from a world full of chaos and This safe space we do find there is release from a world of chaos and noise and we acknowledge that there is only one of us here though our eyes may see boundaries there really is no place that you stop and I start all unique expressions in the sea of one ever expanding continuing energy. So I wait for these precious moments when I
the music takes us into the silence I invite you to lean in to allow yourself to go a bit deeper to consider amidst all of the changes that we have faced and that we continue to face what feelings arise for you during this transition time? Are these feelings that maybe you felt before in other similar circumstances or unsimilar? How did you face these same emotions in the past? What happened for you then when you felt the way that you've been feeling lately? Or perhaps these feelings are new. Thoughts, emotions, ideas that you've never met before. We are in unprecedented times. How will you meet them now? We know that with every change, something moves out and moves away to make space for something to take its place. Something more appropriate, something with a higher purpose than what was before. In considering what you will make of this time, what will this time make of you? What change will you make welcome? How will you be? For a few moments in the silence, consider this. What will this time make of you? Together we acknowledge the one power, the one presence, God the good, knowing that in times of seeming transition or in times of similarity, that all is well. And that the impulse of life is always beckoning to us, through us, as us, to welcome a greater experience of life, a fuller experience of love, and a deeper perspective for living always.
what will this time make of you? What will this time make of our world? What would like to express through you as love now? And knowing this together, and knowing the unity of all that is, we say together, and so it is. So I hope you enjoyed um, Jack Fowler and the silence in the silence. I think that anytime you're talking about making change welcome and you're talking about a space to invite change into the world, invite constructive change, we have the opportunity to consider where forgiveness comes in that space. And I know that if you are like me, and if you might be sheltering in place with your family, <laughs> then there have probably already been many opportunities <laughs> for forgiveness to be granted in your homes uh, already during this uh, interesting time that we share. Or if you are sheltering in place alone, what has come up for you when only you are there to meet you? And so many of the distractions that we typically pursue on a day-to-day -day basis, out of necessity, fall away. What has come up to be forgiven? And when it comes up, how do we meet that? What do we do? And so each day, um, I typically read from the Book of Awakening um, by Mark Nepo. And today, very interestingly enough, there was a word about forgiveness that I'd like to share with you all. What causes us to hurt each other? It's hard to say. But it seems that being human we are subject to many ancient and powerful opposites found in life. Among those that impact us constantly are light and dark, yes and no, and especially fear and peace. For it is out of fear that we feel the need to isolate ourselves or to control others. And it is often in the act of elevating ourselves that we hurt one another not to mention ourselves. When not afraid, when in a moment of peace, we feel quite a different need. We feel a sudden requirement to connect and belong to other living things. And it is then, in the act of true embrace, that we love one another. Still, as no one in daily life is exempt from both sleeping and waking, no one can escape feeling both fear and peace. And so, no one can escape being both hurtful and loving. But the world is kept whole by those who can overcome their fear, however briefly. The blood of life itself is kept vital by those who can simply and bravely repair their separations time and time again. And so here we are as a community, as a world, with the invitation to repair our separation. We are facing identical circumstances and there's nowhere to run. This opportunity known as coronavirus is everywhere in the world. And yet, we have the opportunity to heal the separateness that technology has not necessarily been able to heal. We have the opportunity to address 
the us and them mentality. Now we're all the same. We're all facing the same challenge in pretty much the same way. And so it's quite interesting that forgiveness for ourselves and for others gives us the opportunity to look at, as Mark Nepo wrote, no one has ever only contributed positively or negatively in their life. We are not just our attributes. We are not just our shortcomings. But we were never meant to dwell on our shortcomings, but instead how our gifts are meant to serve the world. And so in opening to the power of the process that is forgiveness, in opening to the reality that no negative contribution in the past can negate the power of a positive contribution in the present, we make a space for a new realization. A Course in Miracles speaks about the fact that the miracle occurs in the shift of our perception of any situation from a perception of fear to a perception of love. And so the invitation then is always there for us. Where is it that we have the opportunity to shift our perception from a perception of fear, from a perception of judgment, from a perception that would focus on someone's guilt or our guilt as opposed to someone's innocence. Where is that opportunity? In this time when we are without many of our daily distractions, we really do have the opportunity to be available in a way like we've never been available before. What is ours to forgive? What do we still cling to? What prideful decisions do we enable every day to keep us bound? to keep us experiencing at a level that is less than what we deserve and that the world deserves of us. Because we never forgive because what they did didn't matter or is all right. We never forgive because what we did didn't have negative consequences or that we may have harmed someone. We forgive because we recognize the opportunity to free the space with the power of forgiveness, to free ourselves, to become more open to the ideas of what is ours to do now? Who are we here to be now? Regardless of where we've been, regardless of who we've been, who are we here to be now? What are we here to do now? I think at a time like this, the world has never needed us to be available more. And so anything that we haven't forgiven, it's time to let go of. And let's just take that into prayer together as we close out today. Together we realize and we gratefully acknowledge that we are a powerful collective of individual expressions of spirit, unbound by anything that has come before us and anything that lay in store. As we bring our awareness fully into this present moment, we send our love to all of those in the world, in our backyards, in our communities, who are serving during this crucial time of need in any way that they may be serving. We lift them up now. We give thanks for the ability 
to be able to shelter in places of safety, of comfort, of convenience, as we do what is ours to do, to protect our own health, and to do our part in suppressing this virus. But we acknowledge at the same time that we are greater than any earthly manifestation such as coronavirus that could ever exist. That we are connected to a realm of creativity, of endless love, of peace, of abundance, of prosperity that can address every need just as we are willing to align our thoughts and ourselves and our lives to it. We are creative. Where there is need, there is already solution. And in this moment together, we affirm our oneness with divine solution for every problem comes bearing its own solution. And in this moment, we affirm our power our strength, and our identity in unity, in love, in health, in wellness, in prosperity, and all things good. We know this because we know that as we allow anything to be so, then so it is. Thank you for spending some time with me this morning in the silence, in reflection about forgiveness. And I'll leave you today with a thought that found me, or a concept I'll say that found me uh, last week. I've been making a conscious choice um, to make sure that the time that I spend watching the news and getting the latest on the situation that we're facing uh, as a nation, I've made a conscious decision and commitment to balance that with as, at least as much time in truth. And when I say truth, I mean in, in concepts or, or, or entertaining concepts, if you will, studying concepts that are based in, as I mentioned earlier, the realm of the changeless, the eternal the truth with the capital T. And so one, um, one of my teachers that I was listening to lecture uh, last week spoke about the unique opportunity that we have when we find ourselves in times where we are not in control, where we don't have a say in the matter. Things are just as they are. They came to be without our ability to be very prepared or you know to many of us seemingly overnight our lives changed and we were in situations where we had to stay home we had to make adjustments in our life that may not have been convenient but that were beyond our control but the point is that our highest potential lies in who we choose to be in times when we are not at choice our highest potential lies in the opportunity of who we will become in times when we are not in control. So I leave you with that thought, and I love you today and always, and look forward to being with you all again, hopefully in person in May, and if not in person, then we'll be right back here again. So all my love for a wonderful week ahead and a beautiful and peaceful day today.